Okay, Watch Maestro fam. Today we're going to talk about a part of the watch that is uh, often underappreciated and really not even noticed much. Uh, we think of this part as just something that's purely aesthetic and really not much else, especially when it comes to Rolex watches. So that part is actually the bezel. So the bezel of the watch is what you see around here, around the edge of the watch dial, the watch face. Now, typically bezels are obviously there for aesthetic reasons and they do add an aesthetic uh, feel and enhance the aesthetics of a watch. So, you know, something like uh, Submariner, something like the Daytona or the GMT, they all have their own distinctive look as well as the, uh, the date just over here. And that is true, uh, that is part of what a bezel is, but uh, in many watches, as I'm about to show you today, the bezel actually serves a purpose uh, that goes hand in hand with the complications of the watch. So like I said, in a watch like the Datejust, the bezel is there just purely for aesthetic reasons. It doesn't have any functionality uh, in, in any particular way, right? Uh, in something like the Datejust, you can have it as uh, gold or you can get it as white gold. Uh, you can get it in smooth or you can get it in fluted. And also you have ob obviously other watches out there. So let's put that aside and let's actually talk about what are some of the uses of bezels out there in different uh, watches. And in this case, we're gonna use Rolex watches uh, because there are some classics and some easy to refer to examples. So which one should we start with? Let's start with the Submariner and we'll get to these other ones a little bit later. So the Submariner, obviously, as the name suggests, is a diving watch. Now, I believe um, originally the Submariners, they were actually, the, the bezel on the Submariner was uh, bi-directional. So you could twist it both ways. Now, what is it there for in the first place? Well, when you're a diver and you're going under the water, you need to have a very good solid idea of how much oxygen you've got left in your tank. And so you can use the bezel very easily to be able to set uh, the number of minutes left. So for example, I'm just going to set the time here. Let's say it's 3.35 and you decide to begin diving. Now, you know that maybe your tank has about uh, 60 minutes and hours worth of oxygen. So all you would do is you would rotate the bezel anti-clockwise is the only direction that it goes. And I'll tell you why in a second to where the minute hand is, right? So now as you begin diving, the minute hand continues to tick along, showing you how many minutes of oxygen you have been using so far and how close you are to the 60 minute mark or any other mark that you would need to keep in mind to know when it's time to go back up. Now, originally, as I said, uh, these used to be bi-directional. You could go anti-clockwise or clockwise. Now, obviously, this can be a problem. If you're under the water and your hand gets knocked against something and you accidentally change this uh, and you go clockwise, you can uh, sh have an indication that you have more oxygen left in the tank than you actually do. Not very good. But uh, in this case where it's just unidirectional and you can only go clockwise, even if the, in the worst case scenario, you do knock your hand somewhere and say you go a couple of notches that way, the only thing that happens is that you're actually in more of a safe zone. So all it shows is that you've got maybe less time left before you need to go back to the surface. So that's obviously not such a bad thing. So that's the purpose of the bezel in a diver's watch. It's there to protect the diver and to show the diver pretty accurately, pretty uh, reliably, uh, how much they have left uh, before they need to go back to the surface. So that's a diver's watch. Let's have a look at um, the Daytona. So the Daytona is traditionally a racing watch. That's where the name comes from, in fact, from Daytona, Florida, where, where um, a lot of racing started. So, the main purpose of the bezel on a Daytona is to be able to tell you your average speed uh, in a car, right? So what you would do is you would unscrew the, the chrono controls. So let's say 
you're going around the track that's exactly one kilometer in length. As soon as the car begins, you would press and it would begin to count down. And let's say it takes 20 seconds for the car to go around the track uh, one full lap. So once it reaches 20 seconds, we'll stop, which is right about now. So you can see that the, um, the second marker, the second hand is pointing at 180. So that means that the average speed of the car was 180 kilometers as it was going around a one kilometer track. Now, obviously this can be adapted to a track that's uh, two kilometers, three kilometers, 10 kilometers. You would, you would just have to do the maths and divide, subtract, multiply, or whatever you, you need to do to be able to get what you need to get. In addition to that, there are also other markers here you see on the subdials. So we have uh, minutes, we have, um, excuse me, we have hours, we have minutes, and we have seconds to show you how much, how many hours, minutes, and seconds have also elapsed in case you need to uh, measure something else in terms of the time it takes to complete a particular task or a particular race or whatever it may be. And then you could, you could reset your um, chrono and you can go again. So that's the purpose behind uh, the, the bezel on a Rolex Daytona. Now, on to probably my favorite, uh, which is the GMT Master. And uh, for those of you fellow travelers out there, like myself, uh, who'd like to get around, um, around the globe, this is something that, that can come in very handy. And you need to set this in a particular way, and it can tell you two and maybe even three time zones. It can even be used as a compass, which I'll show you in a second. So what you would need to first do, let's say, I'm gonna show you here in a second, close up, but let's say it's 1 p.m. here where we are in Dubai. So first, what you would need to do is you would need to set the GMT hand to the equivalent 24 hour time for 1 p.m. being 13 hours, which it is right now. Can you see it's pointing at the 13? And also the hour hand just happens to be also on 1, 1 p.m. So uh, the thing is with the GMT Master 2, it's, uh, it's been done in a way where you can set the hour hand, the local hour hand, independent of the GMT uh, hand, which was not the case originally. So in fact, originally, a quick uh, background on the GMTs, I believe it was Pan Am uh, back in the days that actually uh, approached Rolex and they needed a watch for, their, um, for the pilots to be able to tell the difference uh, of the time zones from where they were flying out of and where they were flying into. So this is what the Rolex came up with. And in fact, the first one that they came up with was the GMT Pepsi. And, and then after that, the rest is history, obviously. So what you would do is you would set, uh, as I said, first the GMT hand to where the local time is in 24 hours, and then the, the hour hand to what the local time actually is. So let's just say it's 1 p.m. right here in Dubai, which would correlate to 1300 hours. So we would close that off. And let's say I want to know the time back home in Sydney, Australia. Now, I know Sydney is six hours ahead of here. So to go ahead, you wanna go counterclockwise because this bezel is uh, bi-directional. You can go clockwise, you can go counterclockwise. So I know Sydney is six hours ahead of here. So we'll go counterclockwise, six notches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, you can see right there, that the hour hand is pointing at 19, 1900 hours, right? Which is seven o'clock, which is correct. So back home right now, it's exactly 7 p.m. And right here, it's 1 p.m. So that's how you would be able to tell the time uh, in two different time zones using a GMT Master 2. Now, I said we can, we can also uh, use this as a compass. So this would only work if the um, GMT time and the and the um, local hour time are set to the local hours, right? Which again, it is in this case, because it was, as we demonstrated before, it's 1 p.m. here, and also this is pointing to 1300. Now, what you would do is you would lay the watch flat and get the hour hand to point towards the sun, wherever the sun may be, and wherever the GMT hand is pointing, that's pointing towards the north. So this would only work in the Northern Hemisphere. So that's a cool little trick for the GMTs. 
So there you have it, guys. The bezel on, uh, on watches, although very aesthetic and adds to the aesthetic feel of the watch and gives each watch a distinct character, actually does serve a purpose. Let us know below what's your favorite bezel, what's your favorite watch, and uh, we'll see you next time.